All right, so welcome to International Pastries. First day, uh, narrated PowerPoint. We're going to talk about day one and the things that we need to talk about for the beginning of the class. We're also going to talk about what we're going to do tomorrow. Um, we will be doing some lab work today, and we will be doing, of course, more lab work tomorrow. As you can see by the illustration on here, our International Pastries class primarily covers, primarily covers uh, the countries of Europe, uh, when it comes to dessert, but we do branch out into the uh, lower Mediterranean and uh, some other areas to uh, explore the possibilities in the history of dessert. This is Chef, uh, Chef Jacques Torres. Uh, Jacques Torres is uh, well known throughout the uh, pastry industry, internationally acclaimed uh, competitor and very well, th very well thought of uh, pastry chef. He's um, French, of course. Uh, he's well known for a lot of things he says about pastry, but one of my favorites here is my approach to pastry. My approach is to perfect a strong foundation of pastry and baking basics. Once these are mastered, there's no limit as to what you can create. And this is really going to be the focus of a lot of things in this class because I really want to make sure that you have a good understanding of the basics and fundamentals so that you can build on those and use those to be creative. Um, so try to make sure that you are uh, staying current with everything we learned up to this point in Bakery Basics and also in the Science of Baking class so that you can apply those things in this class. In this course we will construct a variety of different types of desserts in a variety of different mediums. Um, sometimes they are uh, quite elaborate and sometimes they're quite delicate and involve a lot more uh, attention to detail. But before you can begin constructing you must consider the fundamental elements of the working in baking and pastry, especially in pastry. The building blocks of pastry, which essentially means that uh, these are the most important um, elements that we use to uh, build from. Um, of course that comes down to the baking methods but it also comes down to certain types of preparations. Uh, learning how to build balance. You know a lot of a lot about pastry is not just about producing something uh, that is large. It oftentimes involves individual uh, beautiful small individual items and uh, we have to be able to present them in a way that has balance um, both in flavor, texture, color, temperature, and the visual presentation. And of course, there are the cornerstones of dessert, and this is something that we'll talk about in a little while, um, about the basic rules, really the rules, when it comes to making proper pastry. Our daily lab work in this class um, is going to be a very important part of it. We're going to be using Talon for some of our items. I'm going to have you uh, uh, looking over a narrated PowerPoints and videos on the talent system, but those are really just to get you ready to come to lab. So when you get to lab, make sure you're paying attention. Uh, this is not time to daydream. Um, this is a more advanced class, so I think that uh, uh, you could miss an awful lot if you're not paying attention. So really pay attention to what, what's being said, what is being demonstrated, and try to do your best work. Um, you're expected at this point to have learned the basics and have a good command of the bakery methods, the baking methods, um, and basic working techniques. To make your life easier, think ahead, save trips, use up older ingredients, work clean and organized. Remember, if, it's, if your station's clean at the end of class because you worked clean and organized, it's a lot less that you have to clean up. Work efficiently, but don't rush. Um, rushing causes accidents. This is where you spill things, break things, drop things. Um, th you know, that's when people get overly rushed. The key is to work efficiently. Um, and when you work efficiently, you get better at it and you'll automatically start getting faster. But if you try to rush, you're just going to, you're just going to end up making mistakes. Right? They're mistakes that just cost you time and a lot of frustration. After helping in the kitchen uh, with cleanup, um, if you think you're done, you're not. Make sure to help put away clean dishes, pots and pans. Um, grab a broom, help clean up uh, by helping to sweep the floor and get trash taken out 
We're not done until we're all done in the lab. Remember, we have a small class. And because our class is smaller, especially due to COVID-19, we have to make it a little smaller. Um, that means there's less people to do the cleanup. That means we have to act as a team to get the job done. Uh, when it comes to your own tools, make sure that you take good responsibility for them. Wash them, dry them, put them away. Make sure that when you are done with your tools, don't take them over to the sink and drop them off. Make sure you wash them and you bring them back to your station. I am getting, I, one of my pet peeves, what I'm getting tired of hearing is, oh, I mis I've misplaced a piping tip or I've misplaced uh, my, my mini offset spatula. Uh, keep track of your items. Uh, when I work with tools up at my station, I do the same thing. I grab all my tools, take them over to the sink, I wash them, I bring them straight back to my station, and I make sure that they get, they get put away. This is the way, this is the way that things, um, uh, your tools last you, is if you take good care of them and you don't lose them. Um, carry an accurate thermometer. Throughout this class, we're going to be needing to uh, pay attention to temperature, and temperature control can make or break a product. So uh, make sure that you have a good digital thermometer. Um, check it. Make sure it's working. Um, if it's not, get a different one. Get a new one. I shouldn't probably have to talk about much about uniforms at this point, but by this point in the program, uh, halfway through the semester, um, I expect that everybody has their mise en place in order every day, that you're bringing your hat, your shoes, you've got the right shoes on. Remember, black shoes, you need to have your, your chef's hat, you need to have a white shirt underneath your coat, not a green shirt, not a pink shirt, but a white shirt underneath your chef coat. Any jewelry should be left at home or put in a safe place, but not where not worn on your body where it can where things can fall, or get lost or dirty. Um, just leave all that stuff at home. Um, I'll quickly go over gentlemen's facial hair. I'm the only gentleman in class, I believe, this this uh, uh, semester. But um, you know, we have some basic rules. You know, remember for guys, stubble, stubble doesn't look cool. It just looks sloppy. And if you look sloppy, then people think your food is sloppy. And that means you're unsanitary and nobody wants to see that. So um, either go clean shaven or, uh, or or go full on with a, with, a, uh, with a real beard or something like that and keep it trim. Face masks are standard operating procedure in all food operations. Go to any restaurant, any establishment, they're wearing face masks. And they will be for the next few years at least, if not if not permanently. So their standard operating procedure, get used to it. Um, this is not, uh, face masks are not a political issue. They're not a personal liberty issue or about your personal rights. It's about sanitation. It's about keeping um, nasty viruses under control. And um, I don't want to hear anybody, anybody get up on their soapbox talking about how they can't wear a mask. Nurses wear masks every day of their, of their lives, okay? We can wear masks too. Now, nearly every item you work with in pastry is ready to eat. It's ready to go. That means that you need to be wearing gloves at all times. Um, chocolate, for example, is ready to eat. We will not be cooking it. We will not be baking it. So because of that, it is ready to go. You have to wear gloves with ready to eat food. And we know that from our sanitation and safety class, that all foods that are ready to eat need to be handled with gloves. And, and you have to really watch your sanitation. Um, to make life a little easier on yourself as well and to keep, uh, keep things from getting broken, damaged, dripped, fallen, or whatever, use tools to help transfer elements. You'll see me doing this, and I'll demonstrate it in class, but basically you're using a little mini offset spatula instead of using your fingers to put something in place. I also have tweezers. We can use tweezers to place things. This will help to reduce the chance that you get breakage, damage, and other problems with your, um, with your products when you're trying to place them carefully on a plate. Um, your hands are quite warm. They can melt things. And even through gloves, you can see, you can see fingerprints and that kind of thing. It doesn't look very good um, on, on finished pastry when you see fingerprints. So constantly clean your workspace, both for sanitation and for neatness. Remember, you know, we, we all want to keep our, our food sanitary, but we also want it to look neat and clean and elegant. 
The only way to do that is to keep your station clean. If you have crumbs lying around, if you have uh, other other just associated gook getting on your station, it is going to find its way into your product and it's going to make your product look sloppy. Change your gloves often. Remember that we are in the age of COVID-19, but we're also uh, in the food industry. Every time you change your station or activity, anything you're doing, you should be changing your gloves and washing your hands, uh, or washing your hands and changing your gloves. Every time you go to the dish station, change them out. Um, every time you go and do something else, uh, until you blow your nose, anything like that, wash your hands, put on a fresh pair of gloves. Face masks are required at all times in the hospitality building. No exceptions. There are wet masks out by the out by the main door. Um, you have uh, if you don't have a mask yourself, then we will we provide them. Uh, there's also hand sanitizer all over the building in all these different stations. Make sure that you're using them. Um, you are not allowed to be walking down the hall without a face mask. You need to even use a face mask when you go to the bathroom, if you go into the locker room, if you go into the student lounge. Um, it is important that you're wearing a mask at all times. Once you leave the building, then you can take your mask off. But um, in the meantime, and I wouldn't even recommend taking it off that much when you're outside the building. I mean, if you're going, if you're going to stop somewhere, let's say you're going to stop at a uh, at a Casey's or something like that, put on your mask when you're filling up gas and you go inside or something like that. Um, don't take don't take chances with your health. So there's going to be a lot of homework assignments on talent, and you're going to be graded on these. Um, PowerPoint presentations. These are narrated PowerPoint presentations. I export them as a movie, put them up on YouTube, and then I link them into talent. They're narrated, and they relate to the upcoming class meeting that we're going to have in the lab. So you need to watch those before you come to lab. Some include video links to YouTube, uh, links to articles. They may include readings in the textbook. But you need to do this before you come to lab. You don't want to come to lab cold and not knowing what we're going to be doing. So check out the lab schedule on day one and watch the video or the narrated PowerPoint and make sure you're prepared when you come in so that you know what we're going to be doing and you have a pretty good idea of what we're going to be uh, trying to prepare that day. I'm not going to go through a long explanation in class because I've already done it on talent. So when you get to the lab, you're going to be expected to set up and get started working. You're going to be expected to know what is going on and what we're going to be doing. If I'm going to be doing a demo in class, then I'll be um, letting you get set up and then I'll do a quick demo and then off we go and we'll be off and running. So let's talk about that cornerstones of dessert. Um, the cornerstones of dessert basically are, are major guidelines that we use in all of diff all different types of desserts. Um, these are major things that have to be that have to be addressed anytime you're making a dessert. Where first first and foremost is flavor. We have to con we have to consider flavor and how flavors are working together. Of course, if you just have a bowl of vanilla ice cream, it's going to taste like vanilla ice cream. But what else are you doing with it? Are you going to be combining it with something? Are you going to be adding something to it? Those flavors need to work together. Texture. Uh, I know a lot of people who love love the flavor of certain things, but they can't stand the texture, so they'll never eat it. Um, the texture has to be carefully thought out. If you have something that is soft and light, like mousse, then it's kind of good to take that and offset it with some other uh, some other components that will help to um, change up the texture, so it's not all just mousse. The temperature is very important. Uh, not only are different products very temperature sensitive and can fall apart if they get a little too warm, um, the serving temperature is very important as well. Think of warm apple pie and a scoop of vanilla ice cream. See, they not only taste good together and look good together, but the difference in temperature is what makes them special. Uh, the cold and the hot together, cold and warm together, really make that product, make that, make that dessert special. And then there's contrast. Contrast is very important both visually, but also contrasting textures, contrasting temperatures, contrast, contrasting flavors. You know, things that have a little bit of bitterness in them can be offset with some sweet. Um, things that are dark in color can be offset with things that are light. Things that don't have much color can be offset with things that do have color. Um, so 
Contrast is very important, both for, both for visual, for taste, flavor, texture, and so forth. So all desserts consist of at least three elements. Um, and I say at least because you can have more than this. But um, on a plate of dessert, for example, you have to have a main item, you have to have a sauce, and you have to have a garnish. Now, some desserts you'll see have more than one sauce, or they have more than one garnish, uh, but they will usually have one main item, a sauce, and a garnish, and then maybe a couple other out small elements. All items that are on that plate need to be prepared perfectly, and I don't, I don't mean just sort of good or good enough. I mean they have to be prepared perfectly so that they could stand alone and be eaten on their own, and people would enjoy them just by themselves. Uh, but when brought together into a composition like you see in the pictures where things are brought together and the flavors and textures are accompanying each other that's when that's when the real music starts to happen neatness really counts um, there's nothing worse than seeing a big big old thumbprint on a plate or uh, something that got gouged or got damaged or got beat up um, in the process of trying to plate it if it looks sloppy then people figure it must have been made sloppy and if it's sloppy and the whole kitchen might be sloppy, then that might be a sanitation problem. So we, we really have to think about these things as we put things together because people make, people make, they judge us. They really do. They judge us based on our neatness and our attention to detail. So contemporary pastry. There's a lot going on in the, in the world of pastry. And just like in music, for example, in popular music, you could say, oh, well, this is the age of, well, we could say like the 1970s were the age of disco, but that's not true. There were dozens of different types of music going on at the same time. Disco was just one of those. Along with that came all kinds of the beginnings of the begin beginnings of all different types of music. We saw the beginning of rap music even in the late 1970s. So desserts the same way. Just because we have one thing that seems to be a trend doesn't mean there aren't other trends. Uh, there's a lot going on right now in the world of pastry. Um, but generally, I would say overall, we're getting into using more complexity, more, more rare and unusual ingredients, people trying to experiment with interesting textures, interesting uh, more expensive ingredients, things that will uh, dazzle the eye, uh, things that will, that will really that really seem very special. So we can see some of these items here. We're using a lot of high quality chocolate, uh, very, very um, unique uh, presentation on things, um, much, much different than it used to be back in the 1950s, 1960s, and going up till, until the 1980s. In the mid 1980s, we saw pastry really start taking off. It really started getting a lot more serious attention. And the reason why is because people really started to take, uh, take notice of dessert. Um, they got tired of the same old, same old. But in, in order to make it something special, in order to make it something worth spending money on, you have to, be, uh, have to be able to make it neat. It needs to be perfectly prepared. It needs to be something as special as the meal itself. It needs an important finish to a meal. So. Um, these are just some examples, just some pictures of, of uh, some examples of things of where pastry is going right now, where kind of works, what kind of interesting compositions people are creating. So then there's garnish, and garnish is a very important part of a dessert. You got to remember that we have a main item, we have a sauce. Garnish is something that oftentimes gets overlooked. And the reality is, is that we, if you're going to put a garnish on, on a dessert, you're going to put a garnish on a plate, it needs to be something that, one, it's got to be edible. Two, it's got to be, it's, it really has to complement the dessert, not only visually, but it has to complement the flavor and the texture of the dessert. If it's not edible, it doesn't belong on the plate. If it doesn't complement things, like let's say, you know, you just throw something on the plate as a garnish just just for the sake of having a garnish it may look like an afterthought and it may not it may look like you know well you know that was that was a cheap shot that that pastry chef used that wasn't really very well thought through it should be something that complements the dessert something that makes the dessert better than it would have been without it and uh, 
if it if it's not going to be if it's not going to help the plate if it's not going to make the plate better then it doesn't belong there. Now there are mousse cakes um, and entremet. Uh, entremet is basically we can make a basic mousse cake that has mousse and a little bit of cake in it. That's mousse mousse cake. Um, but we can also make something that's a little more complex, and we refer to that as an entremet. Um, you know, as mousse, whether it be fruit-based or chocolate-based, is very popular due to its texture. It's something where you can pack a lot of calories and a lot of fat into something, and yet it seems light as a feather. It really gained popularity during the 1960s to the 1990s. Um, and you may think, wow, it's, things have been around that long. And they really have. It really did a lot of very cool things with, with mousse back in the old days. But it wasn't nearly as, as beautifully made as it is today. Now, mirror glaze, the idea of putting a shiny glaze on top of something is not new either. It's a trend that has been around since, I would say, since the 40s, 1950s, um, and now it's going through a major revival. Um, it's trending a lot. You'll see a lot of mirror glaze on, on, the, uh, uh, on, the, on, the, on, on Instagram right now, but um, remember, it's something that uh, I was trained to do back in the early 80s. So in previous forms, mousse was glazed only on top, and it wasn't really taken over the sides. Um, and the reason why was because once it went over the sides, it oftentimes would get very thin, and it didn't look very good. Um, so they kept it on top, and that, looked, that, that would look beautiful. Now we've discovered ways of using new ingredients to make those mirror glazes much more successful on vertical surfaces. Uh, we've also developed silicone molds to make rounded edges, rounded surfaces, so that, they, so that the mirror glaze coats evenly. But to do it correctly, it takes a lot of temperature control, uh, very careful preparation of the cake, and very, very careful uh, temperature control on the glaze itself. If the glaze is too warm, it will melt the cake underneath. If it's too cold, it will get lumpy. So we have to be very careful about how we handle these things. They're very, they're very complex um, preparations, but if done correctly, they come out beautiful. Now, like I mentioned here, large cakes are popular, but small individual, um, individual mirror cakes, mirror, mirror glazed cakes, can be very, very popular as well because you can plate them individually and people can try different things without uh, having to commit to a giant to a whole cake. Here's some contemporary entremets, and you can see that underneath all that mirror glaze that you see on, on, on Pinterest and on uh, Instagram, there's a lot going on inside of these. You can see just by the one on the left, there's probably, oh, one, two, three, four, five, at least five elements, at least five items inside that entremet, in addition to a mousse, which could be like, a, it looks like it could be a lemon mousse or it could be a Bavarian cream. And then the mirror glaze is put on top and it hides it all. But what you really, uh, what really gets exciting is when you cut it open and you discover all of these different textures, all of this thought through, very, very well thought through flavors, textures, colors, um, and of course, uh, you know, a really, a really exciting uh, opportunity to try a, a unique combination. It's also a chance for the pastry chef to really show off their skills uh, because they can, they can combine these textures and flavors in such a way that uh, may be very, very creative. So here's some platings. We're going to be plating some desserts in this class. And as you can see, platings can go from fairly complex to fairly simple. I would say in the beginning, most people uh, should usually keep their plating very simple. And the reason why is because for every item you put on that plate, it's got to be prepared perfectly, and it takes time, it takes effort to get them done right. The plate on the upper left, for example, has at least five elements on that plate, um, at least, and that and that can be that can be difficult to bring five separate prepared items together so they look beautiful at the same time. The one on the lower right, on the other hand, is very simple. It's a simple mousse, um, what they call a mousse balm, which essentially is a hemisphere. We don't know what's inside, but I'm I'm, I'm guessing that by putting red currants on top and using a cassis um, puree on the plate, I'm guessing that there's something with the way of red currants inside. Take a look on Pinterest sometime and just look up plated desserts and you will see hundreds of different examples. All right, so 
with all of this in mind, we have to take a look at our lab schedule. Under day one, you're going to see under day one on Talent, there is a lab schedule. The lab schedule shows us what we're going to be doing every day. And um, I would like you to look ahead to what we're going to be doing tomorrow. Um, but check every day in Talent. You should be logging into Talent every day to check for the assigned video or PowerPoint presentation that you have to complete before you come to the lab. And um, today is, is fairly straightforward. We're going to be doing a couple of different things in the lab. Uh, if you've already looked at it, you know that we're going to be preparing two items today, and then we're going to be uh, completing them and finishing them up tomorrow. So we're going to be preparing a batch of chocolate ganache using a new method and prepping it for use for tomorrow. And then we'll also be preparing a batch of firm caramels and forming a slab with those caramels, and we'll be letting that cool overnight and firm up. Both the ganache and caramels must be stored at room temperature on a paper-lined sheet pan, and we're going to cover up both um, by the end of class. We're going to cover them with plastic wrap, label them, date them, and store them on the speed rack in the front of the lab. Remember, you're one of two pastry classes going right now, so you want to make sure you label it well so the other class knows that that's yours and they don't get mixed up with theirs. I'm going to have a separate, I'm going to probably have a separate cart just for the other class. But I want to make sure that each, you know, each one of you can see which one is yours. So with a good label, date, and storing it on the rack, we'll be able to uh, identify which ones are ours. Looking ahead to tomorrow, we're going to be uh, tempering couverture chocolate, using it to coat our ganache in making truffles. So um, we're going to be using our ganache and making truffles out of them, but we have to coat them with tempered chocolate. We'll be using the tempered chocolate for dipping and preparing other chocolate garnishes as well. And uh, I want you to watch the narrated PowerPoint on chocolate tempering tonight um, before you come to lab tomorrow and watch the video on Patrick Roger. Uh, I think you'll like that video. It's a video about, obviously, about Patrick Roger chocolate. He is a renowned chocolatier. Um, from France. He's an MOF and um, I think you'll find that uh, it's pretty incredible. He's an artist that just happens to work in chocolate. He's really quite uh, quite something to see. All right, so when you get ready for lab tomorrow, remember, bring uh, come in uniform, make sure you bring your mask, and we will see you um, in the lab. We'll see you in the lab and ready ready to work with chocolate.